So one of the things I need to work on um, is the pedaling in Carillon. Uh, like organ, it has pedals. Unlike organ, they are uh, <laughs> very noisy. Um, oh, there's one of the quarterlies. I'm assuming you can hear that. Um, and so that's the actual carillon. The, the quarterlies are handled by an electronic system with heavier hammers outside of the bells that get a much louder uh, ring. Um, so this piece is called Slow Dance by Roy Johnson, Roy Hamlin Johnson. And um, I'm just gonna do the pedal parts first. This is a brand new piece to me. And it has uh, pedals pretty constantly throughout the piece. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead. So that omits like all of the melody, which is in the, uh, the hands, the batons. But one of the other things you might notice about this is that, um, one, I'm not wearing organ shoes. These are much rougher and would probably destroy the organ shoes, but I probably should wear slimmer shoes. <laughs> um, you can also control the dynamics on the pedals, which is also unlike the organ. So you kind of have to be uh, more sensitive to that. So one of the challenging things about the baton part here, you have to play chords in one hand. And so what that looks like, um, like at the very end, you're supposed to play that with one hand. And basically your thumb grabs one and the rest of your hand grabs the other. Kind of like that. If you can hear both notes there. If I play it louder. It's supposed to be extremely quiet though. Hmm, the D didn't really sound, did it? That's better. So at the very end, you have something like... Except... <laughs> I gotta make sure they make a noise. And that interlude that I stopped for is where you're way up here. And you have these chords in the left hand. Both of those. If I go very slowly. what that looks like if I do just the left hand part. I won't grab the E by accident. So on the carillon you can kind of expect to reach about a fourth with one hand like this is G to C and the fifth is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> now grabbing my pinky and my thumb there. But a fourth is reasonable. Anything more than that is uh, 
a little crazy. <laughs> so I'm gonna try this. It's supposed to be forte, and then in theory, I'll decrescendo and get very soft, but in practice, I don't know that that's gonna happen. sounds a little strange. Um, the overtones on this instrument are not the same as the real carillon. A real carillon um, kind of has, well you know probably how instruments kind of have this overtone series. It kind of starts like that, right? Where you have the, the fifth and the octave and this major interval. The real carillon has like this minor harmony that happens in the overtone series, and so this composer is actually taking advantage of that, so it sounds really cool on the real instrument. There we go. Yeah, listen to those. Especially on the low bells, you can really hear that fourth pop out. tones on the phone. Maybe for the lowest. The ringing overtone is really prominent uh, in person. I really hope it came across um, through the video, but I guess I'll find out later. Anyway, back to slow dance. Better. I think I need to go slower. So looking at this, as uh, my teacher John Widman explained to me, the note durations like half notes and dotted half notes are really for your benefit as a player because there's nothing you can do, right? Everything is let vibrate <laughs> on a carillon. <laughs> so um, composers have to keep that in mind for sure. And as a player, it's good to know because when you see something like these dotted half notes, that you want to keep your hands, like if you're used to playing organ or even piano, uh, you want to keep your hands down, but in carillon, it's like you have, really, as soon as you strike it, you can move on because there's nothing you can do. It's just going to keep ringing however you played it. So after you play that B and E in the right hand, you want to jump up, like straight away, pretty much. That way you're prepared to play it. One of the things I'm not doing right now that I need to work on is preparing the notes to play them softly because similarly to piano, you know, it's much uh, smaller uh, strike to get a soft dynamic. And so you can bring it down almost all the way down to the bottom and then strike and that'll get you that soft dynamic, which is also why similar to piano, it's hard to play both fast and soft. If I play, for example, the end of the first phrase, right where that dotted half note was, I'm already on the next D and A that happens, you know, a measure and two thirds later. And I can actually bring it down 
without sounding anything. And I can get a very soft dynamic that way. You know, so it has a strike point, um, just like the piano does, but it becomes even more important to actually prepare it on the carillon. So let me try the second half of the phrase again. After, you can just go straight there. And that's, I don't know, that's something really cool and unique, I think, to the carillon. And something that you have to think about, or at least I have to think about a lot. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you next time.